Okay, I'm going to show you how to do what was in the preview. Now, you're going to want, like, this is just for simple typo typography, nothing else. Um, so you're going to want your music and marked beats of where you want the text to be. And then you're also going to want uh, particles. Now, we can either add it later with a BCC particle emitter, or you can get an overlay uh, like this that doesn't move that much and we can make it look 3d um which is what i'll show you uh, and i'm gonna stick with this so q and i'll show you some particle settings on bcc uh particle emitter at the end or i'll just give you a free preset in the google drive but i'm gonna make this go white make the quality lower um I'm just going to copy kind of the backgroundy stuff that Molob put in. So it's a white background, a blue background, uh, with particles. Now I'm going to create a new track. Obviously you need the text on the track as well, so however much text you're going to have. So I'm going to have six, which is quite a lot. Mm. Then again, uh, yeah, you would need to. So six tracks for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are all child tracks, all of these. And then I'm just going to add another one for a parent track just to kind of make it look less confusing. Like this. It would be easier if I just lift this. And that's how it looks. Or if we went like this. I'm pretty sure that makes it look more confusing. Anyway, then we're going to add just a second parent track. Like this. So there's two parent tracks. Highlight everything, change it all to 3D source alpha, 3D source alpha. Now that we have that, I'm then going to make it so you can see the background. So I'm going to go to chroma key. Or BCC linear color key, whichever one works for you. Uh, black. Doesn't look as good as I wanted it to. Hold on. Uh, mask generator. Ah. Here we go. Since the um, mask already has glow on it, I don't really need to add any glow. I'm just going to lower the opacity of the solids just a bit so it looks like that. And then we're going to add our text. And I'm just going, I just realised I'm going to add this blue solid um, as a parent on its own, as a track on its own, because I don't want to move this black this blue solid I only want to move everything else because this isn't going to move and that's what I needed to stay as so I don't know whether you'd want some animations with your text so I'm just going to keep it as normal but I already have an animation tutorial with prototype titler um, so I'm just going to use titles and text for now I'll just type something random um, I'll do, I'll just write welcome to my editing pack or something. Obviously that's not what you're going to write for your edit, but I can't think of anything, so I'm just going to pick a random uh, font, something like this, doesn't matter how big it is, and then drop shadow, uh, Something like that. I'm going to hire this. Now I'm going to make this small because I want it to start from 
I'm actually I'm going to start it from the middle. Uh, so it's going to zoom out from the middle. So I'm just going to make it really small down here. Now I'm going to copy and paste it on the next track here. And then edit the text. And put it in a different place. So welcome to... It's easy if we do them all above each other first so we know where each text is so we don't end up putting it in the same spot. Don't know what I've done there. Restore box, gonna make it go towards the camera a bit more. Like this, but I'm gonna make it smaller. Then drag it here. That looks good. And then put it here. Welcome to there. Uh, if you want to fade out, you just drag it and then fade it so the transition's a bit more smooth, like this. Then we go to the next track and we just keep positioning it where you want it to be. Welcome to my. Then reposition it again. Make sure the first keyframe is the only one you're using. Or if you just create another one and delete the first keyframe. Whichever one works. Closer to the camera, but more closer than this one was. And then zoom it out. Gonna go here. Maybe a bit smaller. I know it doesn't look 3D at the moment, but it will once I show you the whole entire camera. Welcome to my editing. I'm not going to bother with the second beat here since I already muted the audio down here. So I can delete this track. Welcome to my... I'm just going to copy and paste the last one here as well. Editing. Oh, by the way, when you're copy and pasting, make sure it's create a new copy of source media, not a reference. Right, now we're going to place this one where we want it. I'm going to make this one a bit smaller. Not before the mask. Here. Probably down here in the corner. Maybe a bit bigger. Like this. Pack. And then this one's going to be the closest to the camera. So we're going to click up here with our right arrow key. I'm making it smaller because this is how it's going to look when we're zoomed out and we don't want it too close to the camera. It's like this. I'm going to add glow last because when it's just white, it's quite tricky. Right, so now we have what we need, which is just the text and the particles and, well, the blue background. And you've faded each bit in, we're then going to do with the transitions. You're going to need more than two parent tracks because each parent track is one transition, so it's going to be one, two three four five five parent tracks so i'm gonna need three more but an easy way to do this is just select your top parent track that's uh grouped go all the way to the bottom select everything go back to the top click this icon here hold control select it hold control select it hold control and that's all that's left and you have to make sure these are also 3d alpha And now we're going to start, get started with the transitions. So, first parent track, you have to make sure you click this one, because it's parent motion. There's already a keyframe at the start, so I'm going to drag the key... Do a keyframe about up over halfway. So it's two keyframes. Then we're going to zoom in with 3D cam. Until it's just the blue screen it's 
zooms in quite a bit. And then on the second keyframe, I don't want it to zoom out that much. I want to zoom in like this. Yeah, something like that. That should be enough. Obviously, you do it the amount you want to, not not me. Like this isn't the deciding uh, thing. Oops. There we go. I want the graph to start quite quickly but end smoothly, so I'm going to do that. Press apply. Yes. Just move it about a bit. Uh, that looks good. Now we're going to go to the second one. Now this is where things get different. You're going to create a keyframe in the middle of your first and second marker. And then you're going to create a keyframe in the middle or just after the middle of the second and third marker. And with this keyframe, you're going to go to your second word, which for me was over here somewhere. Ah, yeah, here it was. So you zoom out with the camera, which is up here, and then go left and right with perspective. And go like this. Now the reason why it's like this is because I do the graph for 3D cam like this. And this bit here is the midpoint. And the midpoint is where all the speed picks up. Um, so the midpoint for me would be somewhere around here. And I want it to start off slowly, go fast, then end slowly again. Instead of just doing two graphs, I want to do it this way. So if I show you how this one looks, I'm going to lower the quality. And we pre-render this. You can see it goes like this. Makes it easier not to question it too much. And now for the third transition, we want to be here, um, to like halfway between the second and third one, because we're starting off the transition here, then we're going to end over halfway on this next one. Gonna zoom the camera out, then try and find the letter I did, which was over here. You can see I've kind of gone overboard with the zooming out, so I need to just use the perspective, which is here. I again need to zoom in a bit more. Right, I can see this outline of the particles. Um, I don't know whether this is seen on full. It is, so I'm just going to zoom in the particles down here on the 3D cam. Like this. Because I don't want it to... Well, look bad. It wouldn't if I added um, black bars, but yeah. So I'm just going to add the same graph. If you want the graph to be tighter, then you just literally extend these to the point they can't be anymore. That's the fastest it can go. If you want like quick, quick uh, graphs. And keep going. Welcome. Welcome to you just keep doing this with this exact same graph. The only time you don't use this graph is for the beginning transition, which I used this this graph, and then at the very end, which is with this graph. But everything in between is with this. Right, keyframe here, and then all the way at the end here. Now this one I'm pretty sure I have to zoom in the camera because I wanted to do a little zoom in instead of always zooming out. So that's what I'm going to do. Over here. I don't want to do it too much. 
but yeah, that looks good. It's quite, it's, this is very, like, easy when you get the hang of it. You can see it zooming in. Now I'm going to show you how to make these particles behind look a bit more 3D. Because obviously you can tell that it, it isn't. I'm not going to bother doing an end transition because that means I have to add another uh, parent track, which I don't really feel like doing. So now we're going to zoom out and go to the main bit, which is oh, over here. Zoom out more. And like this, I guess. I'm going to make the graph a bit tighter this time. Because I want it to be fairly quick. Now I'll press apply. Now I'm just going to shift all of this to check out how it looks. And now I'm just going to show you how to make the like actual uh, particles look a bit more 3D. So I'm going to duplicate the particle track. Go to the 3D camera. Then make it go forward on the 3D camera itself. Mainly above the text. Like this, so it's closer towards the camera. You can do this more than once, not just twice. So now see how more 3D this looks. Because it, it ends up getting like in front of the camera. Now we have to sort out glow, which I haven't actually figured out yet because of how bright the blue is so i'm just gonna actually test out s glow maybe just keep it with width maybe if i turn down the opacity of the blue Yeah, I guess that works. And you can animate just normal text by animate the tracking, which is advanced tracking here. So if I wanted to do, and I'm going to turn down this real quick. If I wanted to animate the tracking, just go like this, press the stopwatch. You have to, because it's doing the entire track, you have to click at the very end of your text. Just double click for it to go to default. You can't use your uh, flow graph on this, so you're just going to have to keyframe it or use the old graphs with locked tangent. Just locked tangent, like this. For however fast or slow you want your animation to be, or you can use prototype titler, whichever one. Like this. So it's not just, you know, boring um animation um yeah i was hope i hope this is helpful i know someone asked me to do it so uh yeah and i also forgot how to make the particles look 3d on my gojo tunnel tutorial so this kind of adds on to it um and it shows you the basics of 3d cam at least the way i do it so yeah i hope this helps and goodbye